Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and this is the first time we are using uh, uh, basically a computer uh, board where we have the writing pad and the stylus, I have it with myself and this is the first time I'm using it so there might be some problems, you can see uh, my handwriting is not at all good and that too when I'm using it with a big stylus pen, it will take some time to adjust so please spare me with the handwriting, I'm trying to explain as much as I can uh, in the sense that uh, what is exactly happening around the corner with the diagrams i will try to explain so you try to catch the basics and the crux when i try to explain here so now talking about today's topic today's topic is centrifugal pumps versus positive displacement pumps so going to the topic straight away it is a fluid mechanics topic and a very important topic for placements and interviews you know uh, almost every interview will be asked this question that when do we use centrifugal pump when do we use positive displacement pump and what is the primary difference between the two we have had a video on it separately as well where we talked about centrifugal pumps and positive displacement plants all types of positive displacement pumps but here we are going to talk about the working principle of the two types of pumps and how they are different from each other and where they can be practically used we are also going to talk about open pumps which is the archimedean screw in this aspect and how it can be used or where it can be used so going to first type of pump that is centrifugal pump if you see so uh, we are going to talk about centrifugal pump straight away. So centrifugal pump is basically a type of pump where there is an impeller. So basically this is an impeller and the fluid is directed to the eye of the impeller. Now when the fluid is directed to the eye of the impeller, the impeller is rotating at a very high speed. So what happens is it creates a vacuum at the center and throws the liquid with a very high velocity, with a very high velocity around the corner. So that liquid is thrown with a very high velocity uh, around the periphery. And what happens? It experiences a centrifugal force towards the outside. So extremely high velocity. So the velocity at the eye of the impeller is extremely high. So you drop a liquid. So basically pump is used to, uh, uh, to transfer a fluid from a uh, low pressure zone to a high pressure zone. Generally the uh, motion or the flow of fluid occurs from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone by its natural virtue. But when we use a pump, it is basically trying to drag a fluid from a low pressure zone to a high pressure zone. And we need to do some kind of work on the system in order to give them uh, give that energy to the system such that the fluid can be transferred from a low pressure zone to a high pressure zone. So whenever this uh, centrifugal pump is there, so the centrifugal pump will basically have the structure like this. So if I try to draw the centrifugal pump, the centrifugal pump will have a structure like this and there will be this uh, eye of the impeller. So basically whenever the there is a low pressure zone here, the atmospheric pressure in the bed, if I consider to be, this to be the bath of the fluid and this to be the mouth of the centrifugal pump and this to be the centrifugal pump, so the atmospheric pressure here pushes the liquid to the eye of the impeller because it is an extremely low pressure zone and a high velocity zone. So we know when the velocity is high, the pressure is going to be low by Bernoulli's equation. So by Bernoulli's equation, we understand that this eye of the impeller is an extremely, this is called the eye of the impeller. So this is the impeller. As you understand here, this is the impeller. And this is the eye of the impeller. So when you uh, basically by virtue of atmospheric pressure exerted on the bed of the fluid, the fluid starts rising up the tube. If you can see, so if, uh, suppose this is my bath of the fluid, this is my fluid bath, and this is my suction tube. So what happens is, there is this atmospheric pressure PATM, and there is extremely low pressure, which is lower than PATM. And what happens is, due to this PATM, the fluid basically goes up here and reaches the eye of the impeller. When it reaches the eye of the impeller, the impeller is rotating at a very high speed due to a motor connected to it. It throws the fluid at the periphery, as I told you, as I have shown here. So what happens is at the periphery, there are some chokers. So it doesn't let the fluid pass easily and it kind of restricts the fluid velocity. It restricts the fluid motion. So whenever a high velocity is restricted, it is choked at the periphery. So if I can go here, and if I can show you that this is supposedly the periphery and the fluid is thrown here with high velocity and there is a choke here. So basically the velocity drops 
and the pressure rises. So at the center, the pressure is low, velocity is high. At the periphery where there are chokers, velocity drops and the pressure rises. And thus, from a low pressure zone, from a lower pressure zone, it is able to extract the fluid and transfer to a high pressure zone by applying a high pressure, by giving it kinetic energy specifically by the eye of the impeller, which is rotated by a motor. So it is a constant flow react, a constant flow pump where constantly the liquid, you know, if I go, constantly the liquid is going up, constantly the liquid is traveling to the eye, constantly the liquid is thrown to the periphery, constantly the fluid is choked here, constantly the fluid is choked here and the pressure is increased such that the fluid can be delivered at an extremely high pressure. So this is a continuous type of, if I say it's a continuous, continuous flow. Please excuse my handwriting. This is a continuous flow from my friends. And due to this continuous flow, uh, we can handle an extremely high capacity of fluid. So say I have a 500 meter cube per hour fluid that is coming in a continuous capacity. I can handle that capacity, my friends. With a very minimalistic volume of just the impeller, I can constantly handle an extremely, extremely high volume. So it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what my volumetric flow rate is, even at high volumetric flow rate, centrifugal performs absolutely fine, my friends, absolutely fine. So for high capacity or high volumetric flow rate, so when the volumetric flow rate is high, go for a centrifugal pump. Go for a centrifugal pump. Also, when the liquid is low viscosity liquid, that is, it can be easily thrown to the periphery. It is a very fluid liquid, fluid, flu very, very low viscosity, very low viscosity, go for a centrifugal pump. So you understand when is a centrifugal pump used. Now I am going to go to, uh, say, I am going to go to, the positive displacement pump. So let's come to the positive displacement. What does a positive displacement pump? Positive displacement pump basically takes in, so that is a piston cylinder kind of an arrangement. And there is the two inlets. This one is the suction say, and this is dipped directly into a path of fluid. So if I show this in a more horizontal fashion, this one is the suction. And what's happening closely, you observe. So basically, when the piston goes up, it creates a vacuum. Pressure is extremely low. Pressure drops. Atmospheric pressure pushes the liquid here, pushes the liquid PATM, and that rises up the tube. So that fluid rushes into the suction tube, and the fluid gets filled up in the piston cylinder arrangement here. Now, this valve is still closed. This valve is open. As soon as the entire piston gets filled up with this liquid, this valve, my friend, closes. And then the piston has this side movement. Now, when the piston moves this side, moves downwards, what happens is this valve opens, this valve opens, and this valve closes. So the suction closes, the discharge opens. And when the discharge opens, after a certain threshold pressure, it is released at a very high pressure due to the forward stroke of the piston. So it is accumulating the liquid, it is taking the liquid from the suction, and it is then pushing the liquid in the discharge at an extremely high pressure. So it increases the pressure and it delivers at a higher pressure, my friends. And this is how a positive displacement pump occurs. So whenever you have to generate an extremely, extremely high pressure, go for a positive displacement pump. And in case of a high viscosity liquid also, my friends, where the centrifugal pump no longer works because the impeller cannot throw the liquid because of its high viscosity, then go for a positive displacement pump because we would be able to allow the liquid inside. Now, uh, but what is the disadvantage of the positive displacement pump? It cannot handle continuous or high capacity. To handle higher capacity, you need to increase the volume within the piston. You need to increase the volume within the piston, my friends. 
and that is a big big problem how far will you keep the volume moreover it happens in cycles like if i if i observe my friends if i observe what is uh, what is happening in a positive displacement how 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 does the graph look like so firstly when it takes in the liquid uh, from the suction point there is basically no movement my friends so say say i try to draw at the discharge point say this is my discharge pressure or this is my discharge flow rate so initially there is no discharge zero flow rate while it is intaking the liquid there is no discharge then the discharge is there for a continuous period of time and then again it is a zero flow rate and then again a discharge so you understand that this is a pulsation this is a pulsation my friends so it happens it happens it happens zero it happens zero so this way my friends this way uh, this can be done you can understand so for positive displacement pump you need to operate two pumps in parallel then only you can achieve a continuous flow while one pump is having its backward stroke the another pump will have its forward stroke and the uh, discharge will be maintained then when that pump parallelly will have a negative stroke that is ne backward stroke the other pump which one initially had a backward stroke will now have a forward stroke giving a continuous delivery pressure so the discharge pressure is high but the flow rate is questionable or the velocity in this case is highly questionable velocity not velocity volumetric flow rate that is volumetric flow rate or capacity volumetric flow rate or capacity my friends is highly questionable highly questionable in a positive displacement pump you cannot operate higher capacity you can operate low capacity and give an extremely high pressure extremely high discharge pressure so we understand when you need a high pressure you will go for a positive displacement pump when you need a high capacity you will go for a centrifugal pump now what if you need both high capacity and high pressure then you can either go for my friends you can either go for centrifugal pump in series series centrifugal or my friends you can go for i'm writing as positive displacement as pd positive displacement parallel pumps so what happens when we go for positive displacement parallel multiple positive displacement pump increases the total capacity now multiple pumps can deliver at high pressure and can take multiple capacity of liquids along with whereas a uh, centrifugal pump in series what does it do it increases the pressure in stages it handles a very high capacity and then it increases the pressure in step 1 to p1 then again it handles the same capacity and increases the pressure to p2 and then again it handles the capacity and increases the pressure to p3 and thus at the end the p3 is extremely high so it increases the discharge pressure handling initially a very large volume here the pressure is not a problem the pressure is already extremely high it is already at p3 for all the pumps but the pumps have to be operated in parallel to increase the overall capacity my friends the overall capacity my friends which is more favored which is more favored if you ask me obviously more favored is parallel connection my friend as in electrical engineering we also learn that parallel connection is extremely important because even if one pump doesn't perform my friend i can operate with a lower capacity but here if one pump is not working the entire circuit is broken you cannot increase the pressure you cannot deliver the volume you have to operate at a constant capacity at an increased pressure with all the pumps in series working properly even if one pump fails the entire system would fail my friends now finally the end of the topic uh, of this one is what do i conclude uh, when i say open pumps and that that is how i would conclude my topic open pumps open pumps are basically archimedean screws it is also called archimedean screw it is some structure like this my friends some structure like this where if i have to raise a liquid from a lower altitude to a higher altitude against the gravitational force if i have to rise against the gravitational force from a lower pressure to a higher pressure i simply do not take the liquid and pressurize it i simply do not create a high velocity creating a high pressure energy 
but rather i create a slanting screw like structure the screw rotating by itself carrying the liquid in between the pores of the screws and as the screw just like an escalator which you must have seen in malls as the screw moves up the liquid from the lower height from the lower pressure from the lower altitude with then the pores of the screw moves up with the screw this is a very common practice in refineries refineries you would generally see uh, open uh, screws to raise the liquid against gravity but it is also a dangerous practice in refineries in the sense that if if say uh, water comes or rain occurs then there are high chances my friends high chances of uh, um, of 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 the mixing or the probable uh, contamination of the oil or whatever is being transferred because this is an open pump as they call it it is an open system it is an open screw which is subject to mixing but having said that open pumps has a facility has a has a has an advantage over positive displacement and particularly centrifugal pumps what is the advantage the advantage is it, it is not causing the mixing of the components so if suppose you have a reaction mixture you have this mixture where there are lot of chemicals lot of chemicals involved or suppose you have a milk and water mixture but or oil and water mixture and you do not you do not want the oil and water to get mixed centrifugal pump will not do it for you because its primary and fundamental principle is i of the impeller throw mix throw mix throw but doesn't happen in the case of open pump it doesn't tamper with the liquid so open pump simply will transfer from a lower pressure to a higher pressure without without my friends mixing the materials together that is a sheer sheer advantage over centrifugal pumps and uh, that was it that is the difference between a centrifugal pump and a positive displacement pump to summarize one gives a very high discharge pressure by accumulating the fluid positive displacement pump and then delivering at high pressure creating alternative cycles of discharge on the other hand centrifugal pumps continuous capacity high capacity lower discharge pressure but continuously serving by giving an impetus by giving a velocity which is converted into pressure energy my friends so the two working principles are completely different and the two use cases are also different they can be used in series and parallel to achieve the uh, the the high pressure as well as the high capacity uh, that was it from my side today hope you liked it spare my handwriting because this is the first time i'm using the stylus and the work pad hopefully that brings some light into the topic today so i will uh, we will bring more topics like this if you like it like it share it with your friends subscribe to our channel for more content like this hit the bells icon that's it for today thank you very much